Just last week, the founder of a TikTok, that app that most of your young people have on their phone, right. retired mm. with an estimated value of $84 billion of personal wealth. Oh my gosh. He was asked in his exit interview, after you retire, what are you going to do? And he responded, I plan on just reading and daydreaming. Mm. For the first 200 years of American history, parents did better than grandparents. It's only in the last 40 years that this has changed. But I stand before you today as a living witness that God is about to restore order. I want you to lift up that hand. I'm going to speak over your life when I heard God say to me, to say to you, lift up that hand right where it is that you are. I want you to lift up that hand. Need birth. You know what we do. Lift that hand as high as you see yourself going. I declare and decree over your life with the grace of the Holy Ghost. That you are going to do better than your parents. Right. And those of you who come into agreement with my faith declaration, would you clap that hand even right now? You believe that God is going to help you to achieve this feat. Right. In Matthew chapter 17, we stumble upon Jesus who has just healed the boy from demons. And those demons kept throwing him into water and fire. Mm -hmm. His disciples had attempted to uh, extract that demon, but they failed miserably. And in verse 24, immediately after that incident is when the tax collector showed up. Parents, I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to your child. I want them to know that whenever you have a gift or an ability, you're going to have to pay for it. Before he cast out the demons, there were no taxes. But as soon as he goes into trafficking and warfare, that's when there was a price. Young people, I want you to know, please don't think you're going to be gifted for free. There's a tax that is attached to your giftedness. You think you're going to be that gifted and not be talked about it? Thought you were going to be gifted and not be ostracized. Thought you were going to be gifted and not deal with stress and trauma. You thought you were going to be gifted and planted in a perfect family. You thought you were going to be gifted and not have to deal with obstacles. Whatever you are dealing with, it is the tax for your uh -huh. gift. What is amazing is that the tax collectors never went to Jesus. They just went to Peter. And the whole issue of taxes takes us back to Luke chapter 2. When Joseph and Mary received a decree from Caesar Augusta that everyone in their hometown, hear this, had to go pay taxes. When Mary and Joseph found out that they had to go pay taxes, they had to walk from Nazareth to Judea to Bethlehem, which is 80 miles or 28 hours walk with somebody who's pregnant that can take four to five days. When Jesus got the word that he was in Capernaum, here it is, his journey was only 3.8 miles. But for Jesus' parents, when they had to pay the taxes, they had to go 80 miles. I think I lost you. Mary and Joseph had to travel 80 miles and Jesus only had to travel three. What are you saying to me, Pastor? I'm saying to you, you are much closer than your parents ever were. Come on. Whatever it is that they had to go through was a much longer journey than they, what you are you going are to have to travel. Come on. They didn't have your access. Yes. They didn't have your opportunities. Come on. They didn't have your insight. They didn't have your influence. They didn't have your grace. And they didn't have your favor. When the tax collectors came and talked to Peter, 
It's a lot different than the Advent scene that we found in Luke chapter 2. And Holy Spirit showed me something that I'd never paid attention to until I was preparing to talk to you today. Here's what I noticed that I uh, never learned in Sunday school, never heard about in vacation Bible school. I never saw it in our youth program. Do you not realize that uh, I have no record of Jesus' father, Joseph, ever having friends? I can't find Joseph with one friend. Can't find Joseph with one ally. Can't find him with one confidant. Don't forget when the angel comes to Mary to tell Mary that she is with child. I can't find Mary with no friends. Come on. With no sorrows. With no girlfriends. Come on. So much so when she gets the good news, the only person she got to talk to is an old aunt. Come on. Peter, without even consulting Jesus, said to the bill collector, watch what Peter says. Peter says, without ever talking to Jesus, it's going to be taken care of. I want to say something that you probably have never heard before, but I want you to hear it. God told me to tell you, you will have better friends than your parents had. Because who God is going to put in your life right. will not have an ulterior motive. Will not just show up when they need something will not be attached to you just for your gift. But you need a friend like Peter who's going to fight for you, who's going to defend you, who's going to stand up for you, who will give you their last even when you don't have anything for yourself. I need those of you that today can thank God that the friends I got, God had to send them. The friends that I got in my life, I am not lucky, I'm blessed. I'm yeah. grateful. I got folk I can pray with, I can cry with, yeah. I can confide in. Lord, thank you yeah. that I got better friends than my mama had. I got better friends than my daddy had. Thank you for God ordained friends. My friends are my family. Jesus gave the instruction oh, to Peter. Said to Peter, go fishing. Uh-huh. When you go fishing, watch what he says to Peter. When you go fishing, the first fish you catch will have the exact amount of money in its mouth that is needed. When God gave me this revelation, I couldn't wait to get to you on this Sunday morning. I can't God told me to tell you the difference between you and your parents. Your parents have had to work their entire life, life. from hand yes. to mouth. Right. Your entire life. Right. You have watched your to your parents toil, sweat, and strife. Right. Hand to mouth. Yes. Living paycheck to paycheck. But now 40 hours a week, coming home plum tired, falling asleep in yes. the middle, barely got enough energy to concentrate. Yes. Yes. Why? Because they have lived their entire life from hand Come to on. mouth. But God said that will not be your accursed lot. Your parents worked hand to mouth. But if you can hear my voice, here's what the Holy Ghost is saying to you. You will not work hand to mouth. You are going to work mouth to hand. What did you just say, Pastor? Come on. You are going to work mouth to hand. Jesus said to Peter, when you go catch the fish, everything you need where is in the, the mouth of the fish. God told me to tell you, whatever you declare, watch it begin to manifest. Those of you who don't open your mouth, your bank account will always yes. be closed. But those of you that know the power of life and death is in the mouth. Those of you that know speak those things that are not as though they are. Those of you that believe whatsoever I lose in heaven. Uh -huh. If you open up your mouth, uh -huh. it's going to be in your hand. Those of you that don't want nothing, don't say nothing. Cry out on the palm like the graduation is in your hand. The business is in your hand. The scholarship is in your hand. But you got to open your mouth because whatever comes out of your yes. mouth will be in your hand. Yes. You better 
excite him. Yeah. The amazing thing, hear this, is that um, Joseph lived off of his career mm-hmm. where Jesus lived off of his purpose. Come on. Come on. I wonder. Come you on. Can that whatever is your passion. Yeah, I said it is what you will get paid for. Ah! Offensive to people. 
people who are mediocre, but they don't dream at the level that I dream. Thank you. What God has put in me, not many people will understand. Yes. I get irritated with average. I get annoyed with mediocre. Yes. God do something that will blow my mind. Put me in places that I didn't even know existed. Oh. I signed my feet into areas where I used to feel insecure. God don't ever have me dependent on oh. some man to eat. God don't ever have me dependent on some child to live. Don't ever have me having to work even when I don't feel like it. I need to live better. In my parents, thank you. And they want you to. Zach Bisonet. Oh my God. Zach Bisonet wrote a book that really inspired this sermon. Oh, thank you. And the book is called um, How to Be Richer, Smarter, and Better Looking Than Your Parents. Thank you. How to be richer, smarter, and better looking than your parents. Oh my God. He said something Zach Bisonet did in the first chapter of that book that I close with telling you today. Talk to him. He said the most critical lesson Talk to him. is learning from your parents' right. mistakes. Come on. Come on. God planted your parents yes. for you to learn what not to do. Yes. God has opened up your eyes for you to see their frailty, to see their brokenness, uh -huh. to see their limitations, so that you can figure out what is the pathway for me to be better. But tell them that. One week after Pentecost Sunday, I want to say something to you. And I hope that you will find jubilation in it. One week after Pentecost, I got to say this to you. For every worshiper, for every grandparent, for every child, for every godchild, for every niece, every nephew, for the final time in this service, I need you to lift up that hand. How am I? Find your holy God. Come on. Not from Brian that book. But because of the indwelling power of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You are going to be better than your parents. You're going to live better. You're going to make more money. You're going to be happier. Mm -hmm. You're going to make better decisions. Your financial life will be at a whole nother level. I speak over your hand. And the hand of every children born of your womb that has of this day every generational curse has just been broken. I break the curse that has run in your family to make it feel attainable to be average. I break the curse against minimum wage in your family. I break the curse. You better shout over this. Over renting in your family. I break the curse of dysfunctional marriages in your family. I break the curse of going to school but never finishing in your family. I break the curse of the prison pipeline in your family. I break the curse of addiction in your family. I break the curse of every family member that stop believing in God. I declare and decree. I need every person right now to type on the screen. The curse is broken. Somebody shout it out loud. The curse is broken. It's broken over my child. It's broken over my son. It's broken over my daughter. And the book of says, and your sons and your daughters will
to a church that breaks curses. Today, I got to align myself with a ministry. I love this church. Because it is my responsibility to make my children go further than me. Right. Today, I make a decision for the family. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Come on. I want your family to be a part of the new birth family. I want your clan to be Jamal Bryant. Jamal Bryant. It's New Birth Baptist Church. I love this church. To come into agreement, and I want them to come into alignment. All the prompts are available right now. I need you to follow and pursue all of them 
to see it all the way through. I know you got a whole lot of quitters in your family, but it ends with you. You're going to see this thing all the way through. How can I entreat you right now to make a sacrifice on behalf of your family? 40 is the number of generations. 40 is the number of generations. I'm telling you that a generation is getting ready to emerge. Generation is going to emerge out of your family that will be the head and not the tail. God is getting ready to turn some tables around and he's going to do it with this seed. I'm going to challenge you to give a seed on behalf of your family of $40. I want you to do it right now. And I want you to just put your last name in the chat right now. Williams, Johnson, Brewer, Smith, Anderson. Whatever is your last name, I want you to put it in the chat right now. Brown, Smith, Williams. I need you to put it in the chat right now. Watch and see what God is going to do. Mm. You are the kinsman redeemer for your family. Your seed is going to shift your bloodline. What it is that you do in this moment is going to catapult the next generation of your family into regions beyond. I can't tell you how excited I am to see what your family is going to look like when the summer is over. Here we are on Memorial Day. Do you know what God's going to do by Labor Day? Come on. Something overwhelmingly awesome. Come on. What's going to happen with your family? Yes. In this new season yes. for this new generation. And this new anointing. Come on, let's lift God up. Come on, Miles. Come on, let's give God glory and praise. Miles, you better sing. You better sing, Miles. You better sing. You better sing, Miles. Take us out, Miles. Come on now. Don't play with me. Don't play. Can you just lift your hands if you know God is still in control? He's in control. Oh, God. If you know this song, you can sing along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sovereign God, Sovereign King, I trust in you. I trust in you. Sovereign God, Sovereign King. I trust in you, I trust in you, sir. Oh, I, I trust in you, sovereign God. Oh, I trust in you, I trust in you. And we will sing.
So that was it. Um, just letting y'all know, because um, the one thing I wish the pastor would have said was when he's saying you're going to be greater than your parents, don't think what your parents did was nothing. They set the bar for you. So whatever your parents set for you, they did all that they could do. 
And so now it's your time to do better than your parents. So then now you're setting the bar for your kids. So now when your kids grow up, your kids want to do better than you. It's not saying that your parents didn't do the best that they could. Um, they did just enough what they could do for you to want to do better than them. And then your kids going to do better than you. Then your kids are going to do better than, you know, it's, it's supposed to be like that. So don't think he's saying your parents didn't do anything. Um, but you know, some in today's time, you have to say everything because people are sensitive and they take stuff and they run with it. So, um, yeah, they sacrifice so you can have more. So, um, don't think that sermon was talking down on your parents. It wasn't. It was saying your parents did just enough to put you in a position for you to do better. So for these kids who are out here breaking windows or who are out here robbing and stealing, that's not what your parents did. for you. They, they didn't do that for you to be living how you are now. Um, and also, it, he's for real. What you speak out of your mouth is what you're going to get. If you're speaking, I'm broke. If you're speaking, I'm stressed. If you're speaking, I'm depressed. If you're speaking, I I'm, I'm struggling. That is what you're going to get. Whatever comes out of your mouth, the tongue is a powerful thing. There is death in the mouth of the tongue. You can speak death. You can speak praise. You can speak wealth. You can speak happiness. You can speak sadness out of your mouth. So whatever you speak out your mouth, so shall it be. So stop speaking I'm, 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 I don't have enough. Stop speaking. I wish I had more. So start saying I have enough or I'm going to get more or I'm not sad. Even if you are sad, even if you are hurting, even if your body is aching, say, God, my body is better already. It could be hurting a hundred percent, but say, God, my body's better right now. I know it is. I know it is. I know I'm going to get out of this pandemic. I know I'm going to have ten thousand dollars in my pocket and you know what i'm saying well, however much and you may not get it tomorrow you may not get it a year from now but as long as you speak it it will come and that's what people don't understand people want things to come in the blink of an eye it's not gonna come when you want it it's gonna come right when you need it and that's what's wrong with people we always think when we say it it needs to happen no, it's not going to be like that. And that's the devil's trick to make you not believe that God is real or things are going to be good for you. He tricks you to make you be like, see, that God, that God you believe in or that 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 goal you had oh it ain't gonna happen he plays with your mind to make you think it's not gonna happen but once you learn how to get around him and get around all that crap that he's trying to fill to your mind with you will have everything that you want i'm telling you i never thought that i would i mean i knew that I would be in the position that I am right now, but I didn't know it would be this great. But I just always said, God, I'm going to be, I know I'm going to have this. I know the world's going to know my name. I know I'm going to be better than my mom and dad. Not saying that they weren't anything, but I'm telling you, you have to speak it and you have to know it. You can't let any mustard seed of doubt in your mind. You can't because when you have that little doubt, it will it will overflow every positivity that you had because that little bit of doubt will make everything just go away. I don't know why doubt and, and, and negativity is so powerful, but it is. But you have to like, you just have to believe. I'm telling you, believe, 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 believe. I can't stress it enough. Believe in your worst, in your darkest days, believe in your saddest hours believe 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 just believe and say it shall be i promise you and you will see your life change for the better <sighs> i love church <laughs> i love church i love positivity i may not be the best person in the world but I know there's a God. I don't care what anybody tells me. I don't care what anybody says. God ain't, if they say God ain't real, okay, well, let me, let me be in my own fairy tale because my own fairy tale is giving me happiness. So um, I love you guys. 
I hope this um, blessed your week. Go through your next week happy. Um, like he told you, whatever, like don't settle for the job that you're working for. I know it's what you are at right now. I know it's what you're doing right now. That is the key word. It's what you're doing right now. But whatever you wake up thinking about, whatever you go to sleep thinking about, whatever you go through your day doing, that is your purpose. That is what you're supposed to be doing. Um, you're supposed to be making money off of what you love doing. And I used to be at Starbucks and I loved working there. Starbucks was my favorite job ever, but I knew that wasn't my purpose. I knew that isn't where I was supposed to be and where God wanted me. God wanted me making people happy, laughing, you know, enjoying life, me to tell people you can be whatever you want to be. And that's where I am now. And that is what I love doing. I wake up making videos. I go to sleep thinking, what's my next video? I wake up thinking, God, what can I be next? What TV screen can I be on to make people be like, oh my God, I love Zoe. That is what you're supposed to do. If it's braiding hair, if it's cooking a meal, if it's whatever, building houses, if it's whatever, putting up stop signs, Whatever you love doing is what you're supposed to be doing. So don't think because you're in a position right now, you're stuck. You're not stuck. You're just, you're building your foundation to get where you need to be. And it may take a year, two years, 10 years, whatever. And even if you end up passing away, trying to get where you want it to be, the point is you were getting there. And now your kids are going to be like, oh, my mom was trying. My mom was a worker. My mom was a fighter. And then your kids are now going to be like, you know what? My mom or dad died doing what they wanted to do. Now I'm going to get there. You know, so you're building and instilling that into your children. <sighs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's just coming out. I, my words are coming. They coming. They coming. They coming. They coming. I love you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. So don't ever think your life doesn't have a purpose. It, it is a purpose. You are meant to be here. You are supposed to be here. And um, yeah, you are somebody. No matter what anybody says about you, you are amazing. Okay? I love you guys. <laughs> and um, just live your life and be happy, okay? I love y'all. Have a great Sunday. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. Um, and let this take you through your next week and be you. Be the best you because there's only one you. All right. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Oh, my. I got the girl that is queen that is that is queen of Monroe honey that is queen of Monroe okay y'all look I am a plant mama y'all I'm so excited okay so let me show you okay so remember when I planted my plants right and I was like, y'all, they went into shock. Cause I was like, oh my God, my plants went into shock. They're gonna die. Look, she bloomed. These two were not blooming. And th they were bulbs at first. Now they bloomed. I'm so excited. And I even got the little thing to stand them up. And so um, then this one, this one, when I planted it, it went into shock. But now they're bloomed up. I'm so excited. So I had to stand them up because they were like, they were sagging at first. So I was like, oh, they're sad. So I 
Somebody was calling me. So I put this there so they could um stand up and now they're good. Okay, and then this one. Look at my baby. This is Daisy. That's Daisy. And look, they're finna bloom. Look, Daisy's finna bloom with her two sisters. And then this one, she died. Okay, so look, this one died right here. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to like put my energy on it. But this one died when I planted it. But then look, she bloomed here and she's getting ready to bloom. And then that one's gonna bloom. I'm so happy. Okay, and this one is a um this one's a desert, a desert dragon or something like that. I can't remember what it is, but when it blooms, it's going to be so beautiful yeah this is daisy that's daisy and then city girls they're up there okay show my house city girls i'm gonna show y'all city girls in a minute and then this one right here this one it was a it when i planted it it died and i was so sad i was like oh my gosh fuck it and i was talking to her i was like girl you're gonna be a beautiful girl you're gonna grow girl and look at her she grew i'm so excited look at her i don't know what i'm gonna call her I don't know what I'm gonna call her, but she grew. Um, but this is Daisy. That's Daisy. Um, this is Lily. That's Lily. I love Lily. That's um, I don't know her name yet. I know her. Oh, this one right here. This one's spicy. This spicy because she just girl. She's she's still the show, honey. That's spicy. She's still the show. Let me show y'all city girls. Oh, they good. This city girls up here. Hold on. Can't show my house. They gotta see city girls. This city girls up here, girl. That's city girls right here and here. That's she um yeah. But I got to get the other one's name. I don't know yet. But Spicy, Lily, Daisy, City Girls are on the porch. And I got to get the other one's name. But I love it, y'all. But okay, I got to go. We're going to go um, get me a grill. All right, bye, y'all. I just had to show y'all my plants. I was so excited when I came outside and saw they bloomed. I was excited.